Sometimes you need more than one solution to fix a problem, such as replacing a Zoom background. Welcome back to Creator Reality. Today we're going to take a look at a viewer request, a viewer submission, whatever you want to call it. But Marcus, a viewer of the channel, sent me some footage and asked for a specific result. And I'm going to show you today how I fixed that for him. And Marcus, if you're watching, thank you very much for the inspiration for this video. Let's get into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at what we're working with. Here we have a blank timeline and we've got our clips. So we're going to drag our background PNG down here into our timeline and we're going to stretch it out. Notice that arrow at the end, we're gonna just stretch it out. That lets us change the length of the, the uh, clip there. And then we've got the test clip and it's kind of long, but we're gonna alt mouse wheel to zoom out, zoom in, you know, that sort of thing. And then we're gonna stretch out our PNG to fit the entire length of this clip. Now what we wanna do is click somewhere here and press the D key to disable that. And you'll notice we have the checkerboard pattern on the side, that means that this picture does not fill the frame. So we're gonna click on our image, see it's got the red outline, and we're gonna come over here to our inspector. If you don't see it, click right here. And in the video tab, we have zoom. And see the arrows? We're just gonna drag to the right until it fills the space. Now it looks like he's filming in his living room or kitchen, basically. Press D to re-enable our main clip. The interesting thing here is that we have this greenish wall background from where Marcus was recording. And then he shares his screen and it turns kind of a blue and that's going to cause us problems. But what Marcus was looking for was to keep this rectangular area with the curved corners. And originally I thought we could do a magic mask and all this other stuff and fix it. And what Marcus had done was to use magic mask, which is a studio only feature. I have a tutorial right there if you want to watch it and then come on back. We're going to, we're going to play with some other things in addition to magic masking but it didn't work for everything. And there's one really sticky wicket here, if you will. If I zoom in, we can find right here where the timeline ribbon shows um, a kind of a change from the screen recording and the talking head, it fades. So we've got this, if we zoom in far enough, you'll be able to see, we should be able to click right here and that'll be the middle. So this is the first, kind of trick that we should do. Now, what we're gonna to need to do here is use a cross dissolve transition to go from the talking head to the screen recording. So let's do that. So with our playhead right on that transition, it's right in the middle, right? We're gonna come over to effects. If you don't see it, it's right there, effects. And we're gonna click on video transitions in our toolbox. And we're gonna drag and drop cross dissolve up, uh, no, can't do that. We have to press Control B first, and let me Control Z to undo that. Nothing selected. If I Control B to do the break, it breaks everything, and we don't really want to do that. So Control Z to undo that again. We're going to hold Alt and click on our clip, and notice that just the video is selected, not the audio. Now we're going to press Control B, and it's broken. Now we can drag our cross dissolve on, and this will hide the transition from talking head to screen recording. That is step one. There are several more steps to go, but once you've done this a couple of times, it'll get really easy. So stick with me. This, this gets a lot easier once you've done it a few times. So now if we alt mouse wheel and zoom out, we see there's another cut here. So we'll start zooming in and we'll just keep our playhead right there in the middle. And we can see there's another spot. So now that we've broken the audio and video, they're no longer linked, okay? If I alt mouse wheel and zoom out, you'll see that the audio is intact, one piece, but it's also still connected to the first video clip, which is fine for our purposes because when I zoom in and I click here, it will just break the uh, video track there. Now we alt mouse wheel, zoom out. We've got one more break, it's right about there. So we'll zoom in a little further, we'll find that's that spot, let's do two or three more zooms and it'll give us uh, right about there, that's good. Control B to break that. So now Alt mouse wheel to zoom out, we have four distinct clips and for now we're gonna get rid of the cross dissolve and I'll show you why in just a minute. But for the first clip, if we click on it, click on our color icon to go to the color tab, 
One of the things we could try is to come up to our effects. If you don't see it, click on effects, click on the magnifying glass and click HSL or type HSL. And that brings up the HSL keyer. And if we drag that onto our node, nothing happens. But we right click in blank space, add alpha output, connect the output from our node to the blue circle of the alpha output, and then click on here. Oh, look at that. I clicked and dragged just a little bit, but it cut off part of Marcus's face, and that's not good. So we're gonna right click on our node and say, reset node grade. What we need for this is magic masks. So if you have the studio version, you can do this. Otherwise, you're gonna be rotoscoping by hand, or you can try a number of other keyers. Some may work, some may not, but for the purposes of this tutorial, this is solution number one. So we're gonna click on magic mask. We're gonna click on the show the overlay, and this is gonna show our mask overlay. We have plus selected, we select better, drag the iterations up to about 10, and then we're gonna drag around Marcus's face and his hands. And that ought to be good there. And then we're gonna track back and forth. And while that tracks and figures out everything that's going on, boop the like button if you're learning anything and be prepared to leave a comment below. Maybe you've subscribed, maybe you haven't, maybe you wanna tell me why you won't subscribe to my channel. Do so in the comment section below. And look at that, it's done. Now that it's done, and of course I sped that up, we'll turn our mask overlay off. When you turn the mask overlay on, it shows you with a reddish tinge what's gonna be um, kept and everything left in the original color is what's gonna be dropped off. So when I undo this, you see again, there we have the background. And it did a pretty good job. We're just gonna leave it as is for now. If you want more details on Magic Mask, look at my tutorial. But we're gonna go back to the edit page. So now you can see Marcus is in his living room next to his kitchen, he's recording. But our second clip is not so lucky and Magic Mask won't copy and paste on here. So we're just gonna real quick go in and create an alpha output and set up our magic mask again and draw over Marcus here and then track it. Now that that's done, we go back to the edit page and you can clearly see that it got everything good. If we go to the first clip here, yes, it's got some of the screen recording here. Don't worry about that. The cross dissolve will fix that. So we have these two clips set up. Let's go try to fix one of the uh, screen recording clips. We'll come back into the color tab. We're already in our magic mask area. And if we try to draw on Marcus, it'll do a good job here, but it won't keep any of the screen recording. And if I draw on the screen recording, it gets really wonky really quick. And you'll notice if I zoom in with my mouse wheel here, it'll grab some of this left area, but not all of it. And I can click on here and then it'll grab some of the purple on the edge. And it's just gonna be an ugly situation. So we're gonna right click, reset our node grade. And here is where the HSL keyer comes in. And I talked about this in another video, but it's right here. We can, un, for some reason, resolve. If you toggle the overlay, it gets really funny, even if you're in the HSL keyer. But here we are, I press Z to reset to fit, right? So if I zoom in and press Z, it, in the color tab here, it will zoom to fit. Now, what we wanna do is get rid of just this background. So I'm gonna zoom back in with my mouse wheel. So now with our HSL here, nothing's happening. So I click here, nothing's happening. Oh yeah, we need an alpha output. So we're gonna do that just like we did before and it's okay. So let's hit reset because we did some funny things and we're just gonna drag here and there and that's gonna keep it. If I reset it again, you'll see that it expanded this uh, rectangle just a little bit. So we're gonna drag right there, see it's too much. So we wanna undo and just drag here and there it goes. So in this case, we found one spot on the wall that was green enough and you kind of in the middle of all the different greens. You may have to play with this and tinker with it a little bit depending on the color of your wall and it's, you know that sort of thing, but now it, it's really, it's keyed on just that background behind him. And if I press Z again, you can see that it's gonna keep everything else. So if I undo this connection, all we got rid of was the background behind Marcus. So now we're back in the edit page and you can see that our background is here, but the screen recording and Marcus are kept. That's all well and good, but over here, we have to fix this. So we're gonna select 
just our first clip, press Control C to copy, and then we're gonna click on our second clip, and we're gonna hold Alt and press V, which brings up paste attributes. And it may have this minus, and then some of the checks. We wanna just have a check mark, check mark there, so make sure that's selected, and then press Apply. There's lots of options in there, but that's the one we need, and you can see it does a great job all the way through. These two clips are done. This clip is done, this clip is done, but we wanna fix the background here because it's the same piece of the chair, right? You can see it's the same piece of the chair. So we're gonna click and we have our snapping icon selected. If it's gray, you wanna click on it so that snapping is selected. And we're gonna come over here to the right and I'll show you why in a second. Click on just our background, press Control B to break. Notice that this whole earlier section is still selected. That's why we start at the end and work our way back. Click here and click here and boom, now we have our cuts. So now what we need to do is resize this image to match the background. So for that, there's several ways of doing it, but we're gonna zoom way out and move over and you can't really see what's going on. So we're gonna click on the top clip here and we're going to come down to composite and we're gonna leave composite mode normal. We're gonna drag our opacity down to about 40% there. Now we can see the background image really well, right? So we can scroll back up and we can bring our position over, bring our position down and bring our zoom way down. Okay, that's too small. We can move it over a little bit further. And if you find it hard to see where the edges are on your overlaying clip, we can come back to composite and raise it up a little bit. There we go. So 72% seems to be better. Then we scroll back up after clicking on our background and we move it over. We need to make it slightly bigger. It doesn't have to be perfect. Viewers aren't gonna be able to tell, but that's gonna look pretty good right there. If you want, you can click on the number and you can double click it and type in 0.32 and tab out. And that gets us pretty darn close. So now we wanna select our background, Control C, click on our second background, Alt V, and we can leave it all selected and press apply. And now you'll see that our background is resized here. If I disable that with the D key, it's resized. Now we gotta make sure we come back here to our first clip and drag our opacity back up to 100. And now we're ready for our cross dissolve. So we'll zoom in so you can see it, but our cross dissolve is right here. Effects, toolbox, video transitions, cross dissolve. And we'll drag one on each of these transitions. And there you go. So now we can play this back and it looks good. It's pretty good. It might need a little bit of tweaking, but then it goes to the screen uh, recording and Marcus looks pretty good. And I know this is playing back in the foreground. I'm in a little window and I understand that it wasn't perfect. For the purposes of this tutorial, it's okay. If you watched my Magic Mask tutorial, you'd know how to add extra lines in throughout the playback and that way you get it as perfect as you can. Now we're coming up on our second transition and it's gonna go back in and you're good. If you find that that looks a little weird, we can add cross dissolves between the background images too. And then if we play this back, it'll look a little bit smoother. Also, mind you, it has to fill up the render cache. If I zoom in, you can see the render cache there. Now that that's a blue line, DaVinci Resolve has cached the entire transition. So it's pre-rendered it. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Again, it might not be perfect, but it's very close to what you need. And with a little bit more tinkering, you can fine tune it. If you have a longer clip with a lot of transitions, this could get tedious, but it will get the job done using the two methods we showed in this video. So, did you learn something? Was that exciting? It probably wasn't very exciting, but hopefully it was informative. If you like this video, don't forget to boop the like button. Please consider uh, subscribing. It's really hard to say this stuff. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. Go watch this video next. YouTube thinks you'll like it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.